Hey guys, good morning. This is Ben with Gears and Gasoline, and today we're going to be talking about washing cars. Now we're going to go to Charlottesville, Virginia, where our friend Daniel has a shop called Automotive Aesthetic, and he wanted to detail one of our cars for us and show us the whole process. And uh, we we're trying to figure out which car we were going to have him do, but we realized at the end of the day there's really only one option. It's going to be Ben's Forester. So I've owned this car for almost a year now. We've been using it as our camera car, and I've literally never washed it. But it's coming up on about time that I need to get a newer, lower mileage car, so this one's going to have to be up for sale. And I figure, what better car to take to Daniel than probably the dirtiest car we can find? Hi, my name is Daniel Wendell. I am an automotive aesthetic here in Charlottesville, Virginia. We work on anything, you know, we work on anything from Honda Civics to expensive sports cars. The way that I see it is, you know, everybody should maintain their car and everybody has a different way that, that it works for them or sometimes it doesn't work for them and then they end up watching videos on YouTube about how to do it. Some people don't like it, some people do and I figured I, you know, we could get together and try to teach people what, you know, what they can do and at what extent they should kind of take a hands-off approach and say, okay, I want to trust a professional with this. Today, we're going to be cleaning up Ben's Subaru Forester. It's, it's going to be fun though because we we haven't worked on anything that's, that, that's never been washed in an ownership before, so this is going to be an experience. Today we are going to be doing a couple different steps to the Forester. Cleaning it and decontaminating it, step one. Step two, rejuvenating it, polishing, stuff like that. And three, protecting it. Hopefully we're going to be able to get it all done today. We'll see. So the first step to proper car maintenance is obviously washing your car. first step for me is always putting a coat of foam on the on the car. Um, what this does is it acts to kind of try to emulsify the dirt, lift it away, and or break it down um, so that before you even touch the car, the car has the least possible amount of dirt or contamination that you risk putting swirl marks, um, you know, and, and, and marring the paint. Sometimes we call them love marks, you know, people using, you know, caring, trying to care for their car, but not knowing exactly what they're doing. It could be a million different things, your wash media, what you're using to wash the car with. Um, it can be the fact that you, you know, your buckets are, you know, you've got dirt, you know, swirling around in these buckets of water and when it falls to the bottom and then you swirl back up, it goes to the top. Great guards, that's the way you deal with that, that situation. Um, two bucket method, rinsing the, the mitt in a clean bucket of water before you go into the, the shampoo bucket of water, you know, the, the, with the soap solution. Going upward and downward motions on vertical panels rather than horizontally, because if you do put in any swirl marks, then on, you only catch it in your eye if you're standing at the perfect, you know, the, the sun and the light is standing at the perfect place, versus if you go side to side and you do put a swirl mark in on the off chance, then everybody's gonna see it from any direction. You know, if you do this properly, if you do, do these things properly, your paint is good, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's something where it might need a little top up, you know, every year or two years, you, you know, you might need a light, you know, fine machine polishing, but you don't, you won't need, you know, heavy duty corrections. So the step two of this car, we're gonna get it over, put it on the lift, so, you know, easy access to the, the bottom panels and everything. We're gonna tape everything off, all the trim, all the black, you know, anything that you could possibly get that white residue left over that nobody likes. And then we're gonna try to polish it. We're gonna see see what, you know, after we, we clean it, we're gonna be able to inspect it and know what we're working with. And then hopefully, you know, we'll be able to figure out the right, um, you know, pad combination with the polish combination, with the machine combination to make the best result. One of the things is, is that you have to know what you're doing and how much paint you need to take off. You don't just come in and hit it, you know, hit it real hard with like a rotary wool pad and, you know, and just heavy duty, you know, compound and just level it on anything. You only want to take off the, the least amount of paint possible. factory headlights fogging up and, and fading is a result of the factory UV coating failing. The proper way to deal with that is to completely remove the factory coating by wet sanding, 
I usually start at about 1500 grit, you know, go to 2000, then 2500, then 3000, and then polish it out. With these lights, we don't have time. So basically, we, you know, we're, we're doing the quick and easy, the quick and dirty approach uh, to just get them improved, to get it sold. We're not going for a 100 point concord, even just with the paint. You know, it's not, that's something that takes me a week, two weeks sometimes, you know, to make it at 100%. It's like the Bugatti Veyron. So it takes, you know, 300 horsepower to get the car to 150 miles per hour. After that, to get the car from 150 to 200 miles an hour, it takes like the rest of the 700 horsepower. You gotta do a lot more to get that last little percentage. So it's the same thing with cars, with, with detail. It, you can get the car 50% in an hour and a half. You can get the car 75% in five hours. But for that last 25% or that last 10%, that's an extra two weeks. In terms of protection, you, you have three traditional forms of protection. You have carnauba waxes, you have sealants, and now in the past couple of years the technology has gotten really good, something called coatings. With this situation, we're probably going to use a sealant, which will protect to, for about six months and um, it'll be good. So while a car is here in my shop, I look at it as if it's my own. After it leaves my shop, it's up to the owner to maintain it properly. If I go through and, and polish a car out and spend a lot of time doing it, and then they go to a car wash down the street or they don't take my advice on how to wash their car correctly, they end up with the same problems again because they didn't maintain it properly. So ultimately, it's up to the owner to, to really maintain their car the way that it's supposed to and it deserves to be. Washed it, decontaminated it, rejuvenated it, then we protected it. We restored the paint to a level that, you know, somebody could actually look at this and see the reflection in it. You know, there's edges and there's corners and stuff where truthfully, like, it's not perfect. You know, it's, we did a two-stage correction in like four hours. It cleaned up really, really well. It's not a black car, it's got like gold flake in it. I didn't know I could have a car and not know that it had a color paint underneath it. <laughs>